Yo, what's going on? It's someone that's someone, and welcome back to today's video. Today we have another mix, this one being on Amanita Mascara, or as I like to call, the Mario Mushroom. This is known for being a poisonous mushroom, but it still has shown to give unique psychedelic effects and delirious and depressant effects, which the stories we have here today really detail well what that's like. And also for today, along with me, we have a feature, and that's Bori. We got a ton of requests to do some stuff together, and this video is just the start of many. What is going on guys? It is Blur here back with another video here on someone's channel today. I'm going to be reading out a true report here on someone's channel. So thank you someone for having me on the channel. Uh, I just want to say big thanks to him. A lot of you guys probably already know me because we make very similar content. Um, we are making a team together. We do need a name for that. So any suggestions uh, that team does uh, involve trip tips, tales from the trip, Vivek, me and someone, probably all people you guys are very well aware of. Uh, also, check out my channel if you guys haven't already. Link will probably be in the description, and I'll leave a comment on the video. Anyway, let's get into this report, guys. And also, before we get into this, I do want to know the stories I am reading are from back in the day, so the delivery and quality will vary, but we're keeping it that way for authenticity. But besides that, let me know what you guys want to see next. And technically, welcome to Delirium Week. After this, we're starting. So if you guys want to see more of these, you already know, thumbs up the video, subscribe, and drop a comment. But without further ado, let's dive right into this. The Infinite Source of Life Hi all you spirit seekers. I have read many reports about AM. Many of the people that have disconnected from reality on this mushroom have not remembered their total experience. For most people, I believe this to be a good thing because what I have seen on these mushrooms is not for the weak-minded. A friend of mine had come across some of these and invited me over. After arriving, I was in awe of the size and color but thought that they must be alright. I proceeded to ingest one fat cap, about 7.5 to 8 grams. I waited around for about 30 minutes and started getting a strange rush similar to a cubensis trip. I walked to another friend's house, which was about a half hour away. After sitting there for about a half hour, I felt I was beginning to plateau already and was going to get nothing more from it. I decided to eat a little more, another cap smaller than the last. About 10 minutes after this, I started to actually trip. My vision was blurred as though I was drunk and I felt a small tinge of the psychedelic mind. Some girl that was there ended up giving me and a friend of mine a ride back to my house. By this time, I felt very uneasy about how my trip was going to go. Reality seemed to be shifting into whole new dimensions. Lots of heat came from my body and I was drenched in sweat, but I just lay down to try to get the queasiness in my stomach to go away. After a while, my symptoms cleared a bit, so I decided to go into the other room with my sister. At this time, my vision of this world started to slip. I started to feel like I was being sucked into another world. I don't really know how to explain all that. Then there was a point of total darkness, but I was aware of everything. Time began to have no meaning, and seconds seemed like eons. For every second that passed, I experienced life through everyone's eyes. And I do mean everyone. It was as if I was stuck in that dream where you're falling and you know you're going to hit the ground, but you never do. You just wake up. But when I hit, I felt like I became one with God. I was God. I was God and I was looking in a mirror, judging myself, my creation, the whole of existence. This was the end of time and I was sublimely happy with life and everything I had done. And as soon as I realized all of this, I got sucked back through time to the infinite source of life, the beginning of time. The key to life was sound the word of God. Interestingly enough, it was the letter I, though I think it was more the meaning than the actual sound. So I was bouncing through time from front to back, and each time it was different, but every time there was a middle point which was my physical death. There's so much more that I can't type here because there aren't words for it, but if you're thinking about doing these mushrooms, be warned as I found all these visions really terrifying. But after looking back, I'm really glad that I ended up doing it. Peace.
So this report was written by a guy named Soma, and it was on Amanita muscaria, as I said, and the total dose was 9 grams. His body weight is around 210 pounds. I took an estimated 7 to 9 grams. Took half a large cap within tea at 8 p.m. Tea was made by boiling water for three minutes in the microwave and then pouring the still very hot water over the cap and letting it steep for 10 minutes or so. Then filter through the tea strainer. Took tea with milk. I wish I had some honey because even though I love Soma, I dislike the taste, especially in a tea. About 9.30 p.m., I ate another half of a dried cap. This was a medium-sized cap, feeling pretty good. By 10 o'clock, high by 11 o'clock. Then chewed the last bit, around a fifth of medium cap, around 11.30 p.m. The last bit seemed to be what pushed me over the edge. Again, total consumption is estimated at 7 to 9 grams from three separate dried mushrooms, all caps. Some observations from my notes taken at the time. The world is pulsing with energy. Each item in the room is alternating and expanding and contracting, pulsing with life and energy. Colors are very intense and vivid, and the light seems to penetrate everything. Objects have an inner glow, much as I remember seeing things when I was a child. Lighting seems like that within the big top at the circus. This is a very high energy buzz. Intellectual, religious, physical. Work. I am painting the ceiling of a very large room. It's effortless. It's effortless. I feel invincible, not violent at all, but very strong. I'm experiencing minor twitching con- convulsions, but they assist in the work. I'm used to this from previous soma experiences. I urinated, but didn't drink it, which I have done in the past. I'm so high that I don't feel necessary to extend or enhance this trip. I tried to turn off my cell phone but I can't even figure out how. I then had the sudden urge to conserve the battery. This is the greatest drug in the world. I feel God pulsing through my muscles. Just realize, anyone can dance to every song because the beat is God. The pulse of energy that emanates through everything is God. I am dancing with God. Literally. God is a mushroom, or rather, God created the mushroom so that man could participate in God's consciousness. Here began a long period of time where the word God was continually repeated in my mind. Although it took a long time subjectively before I realized it, the situation was that I was sitting on the couch downstairs with this tremendous buzz going on. Everything in the universe was just buzzing with energy, and I was on the verge of feeling overwhelmed. I had to sit down. When all of a sudden I realized that the sound of the buzz was the word God. The meaning of the phrase in the beginning was the word and the word was God becomes crystal clear to me. I become one with God. I'm not talking about a sublime intellectual experience. This was the most astounding, powerful, awe-inspiring experience I have ever had. I'm not a scholar on Soma, although I've read half a dozen books on the topic. But this was, I believe, a peak religious experience. I can easily imagine how people in ancient times would be in awe of this mushroom. I had the distinct sense that the mushroom was identifying itself through my consciousness as God. After this, which was probably five or six hours into the trip, I began to have heavier convulsions, twitching, and resumed painting. However, I was dropping the paint roller at a fairly regular interval. I began to notice that the convulsions were cycling through my body and started to worry, just a bit that they would affect my heart. For example, my hand would twitch, then my feet, then my arms. I was afraid that my heart would stop when its turn came up, but after my legs buckled and I did not fall, I recovered very quickly. I stopped worrying about that. I also knew, because generally my memory was good, that this mushroom isn't a killer. To the contrary, It is my protector and my counsellor. Another idea mentioned above is that somehow Soma is God's means of experiencing, through man's mind, the joy of being. Hard to describe, but I had the distinct impression that somehow God is only able to experience existence vicariously. Somehow human beings and other sentient beings are the lenses through which God views existence. 
the mushroom is the catalyst. For some reason, the time frame of 350 million years kept running through my mind. This may be from one of Terence McKenna's books, but the idea that Soma is very, very ancient was in my head. I also went through short periods of time where I was just standing and swaying, looking around and getting off on the trip. Not heavy visuals, an example, no walls melting, etc., but one interesting feature was seeing the electrons, or something like that, within the air, in front and all around me. They were very, very tiny multicolored points, almost like gnats, but lots of them, flying around, similar to the stars one sees with a bump to the head. Very strange. I knew at this point that I was totally stoned and decided I was done with painting the ceiling. Also, I knocked the radio on the floor and couldn't figure out how to get it working again. Definitely impaired. Finally, at 3 o'clock, I went to bed. I was glad that I had stopped when I did as far as not taking more. I had a somewhat similar experience 20 years ago on Cubensis, but that was more of a bad trip with things melting and many negative fears intruding on the buzz. This experience was generally 99% positive with little or no fear. The twitching seems to be a component of the Soma buzz for me, so I'm not fearful of that effect. I would certainly not drive or operate heavy equipment on a trip like this. Even a paint roller was too much at the later stages. Also, this would be an incredible experience, I believe, outside and in nature. In hindsight, I should have walked outside and looked around, but it was 3am and I was covered in paint and the dogs would have woken up, etc. All in all, in an astounding trip, I still had another dose left, maybe another 9 grams, one large full cap and two fifths of another cap. That will be an intense trip, but the question for me at this point is, when? This stuff is so strong, it's not something I would do every day or even every week. One other tip from Donald Teeter's works is, don't drink carbonated beverages with Soma. I found out the hard way that doing so will often lead to nausea. As it is, I drink milk with the shrooms and rarely, if ever, experience nausea. Again, no carbonated beverage, take care folks, and respect. So Emma. There we go, guys. There we have it. That was a trip there on Amanita Muscaria. It seems like he kind of made it into another sort of drug called Soma, or maybe that is just the phrase that they call uh, this mushroom mixed in with uh, tea. Um, I actually hadn't heard of Soma before this. I had heard of this mushroom, though, because it's the classic mushroom that we all know, the red and white one. It's the one that Mario eats when he gets uh, supersized in Mario, so... <laughs> Uh, we all know this mushroom. I actually thought it was a poison, like that people couldn't trip on it without really dying, but I guess you can, so I was wrong about that, so I learned some here today. I hope you guys learned some here today, and I hope you guys did enjoy this experience. Remember, my channel will probably be down there in the description, and I hope all you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to leave a like for someone, and be sure to subscribe to his channel if you have not already. First I met God, then I was God. Prelude. I had taken a philosophy class called Comparative Religions, and I was also currently taking a class called Philosophy of Science. I regard the later as a bit of a wasted time, as we largely talked about what can be known, perception, and various other completely subjunctive things. Every week we have to write a single space one page paper, and in my most recent paper I brought up the futility of the free will versus determinism debate. See subjectivity. I also had recently done some reading about theories of the origin of the universe. The comparative religions class was useful in that I learned that I don't need to be able to find an organized religious body that is in line with what I believe and what I am like personality wise. I can find my own path. Unfortunately, I didn't have anyone I knew that could fill the role of sitter, so I was alone in my room where I spent most of my time anyways. Intermezzo My previous attempts involved roughly 12 grams and 16 grams of dried, commercially available Amanita mascara. Nothing happened both times. Of course, all my research suggested that something definitely should have happened, especially at those doses. Some accounts I had read cited 5 to 15 as being more than the user had bargained for. In reality, the potency of these mushrooms varies substantially, making them risky for first timers. 
Later on, I bought another 28 grams, but a lower grade. I thought about a 20 to 23 gram dose, but I thought that would have left me with a useless 6 to 8 grams left over dose based on previous experience. I foolishly ingested the whole 28 grams on an empty stomach. About 30 minutes later, I started to feel sick to my stomach. I ate a few tortilla chips since I had eaten the mushrooms on an empty stomach thinking that would help. It didn't, but keeping still seemed to help. I decided to lie down on my bed. I closed my eyes and began to feel relaxed. I went into a state of daydreaming slash hypnagogia. My breathing was slightly depressed, and as I was breathing, I imagined four tanks of air as if it were an icon in the lower right corner of a video game. And as I breathed out, I filled the four tanks. The next thing I recall was the trip. I experienced the creation of the universe to its heat death in a single blink of the eye, over and over and over again. I pretty much reached a delirious poison state. The strange thing was that there was this brief pain sensation associated with this process. It was as if my fragile human psyche couldn't handle the concept of infinity. At first, I thought I was dreaming, but the repetitiveness clued me into the fact that I was tripping. After a while, I thought I had died and merged with God, then I thought I was God, but it wouldn't stop. I thought, please God, make it stop, but I was God and it wouldn't stop. I thought I had died and gone to hell. I started freaking out. I couldn't see and wasn't aware of having a mouth and a voice. I tried to will myself out of the trip with each successive creation of the universe, but it wouldn't work. I could feel the keys and wallet in my pockets, I could feel the carpet on the floor, but all I experienced was the big bang, over and over. To this day, I couldn't tell you if my eyes were open or closed. I believe I eventually got used to the painful sensation I felt before, or it went away by itself. I was experiencing infinity and began to play little games to keep from going crazy. Don't ask me how I knew this, but what would happen is that I would tell the Jews I was Yahweh. The Christians, I was Jesus. The Muslims, I was Allah. The Hindus, I was Brahman. The Chinese, I was the Tao. And so on. I can't remember what else I tried, but every time everything would happen just the way it happened before. And I couldn't change anything. It was like I, as God, was always one step ahead of me. Each time the universe was created, everything happened exactly the same. Exactly the way it's supposed to happen. I did eventually come down about two hours after I had lain down, however, this repeated motive continued as I experienced coming down and seeing my TV, which I had left on, and so it seemed like I wasn't really coming down per se. It was as if I was finally coming to, only to have the feeling of coming down repeat over and over again. It did stop eventually, which involved me sitting up and throwing up in the wastebasket, which I had propositioned just for this situation. My heart was pounding like crazy and I gasped for air. It was as if I had died and was reborn. I hadn't even left my bed during the whole time. Whenever I decided to move to another room, my recollection would fade out and things would fade in and I would find myself in the room I wanted to be in. I got up and went to the bathroom and also took out my contacts at this time. I wanted to go back to bed and just go to sleep because I felt exhausted. I went back to make sure I had taken out both contacts. My vision was fuzzy and it looked like I had only taken one contact out. I looked for the other contact on the floor but couldn't find it. I repeatedly went back looking for my contact only to eventually find out that I actually put both of them in the same side of the case. I went to bed then but before I did I turned off all the lights around the apartment. This was much more difficult than it sounds as I would turn off one light and forget to turn off another but I would realize this when I was already back in my room, as time would jump around on me. The next day after awakening, I felt a certain calm and connectedness to everything around me. I can still feel it sometimes, if I stop and relax and remember to breathe. Full Blown As a longtime user of Hulu Cynogens, an experience with Amanita Mascara was way overdue. I came into a batch surfing the net and thought I'd try what was available. I started with downing 6 grams powdered ayahuasca vine mixed with some orange juice for flavor. I couldn't handle the tea, so this was the next best thing. Next came 10 grams of the finest caps I had ever seen. Beautiful red caps dried to perfection. Munch munch. I waited about an hour and nothing, so I figured I had been had, not even a hint of a head change. 
I polished off another 10 grams and topped it off with some 5x salvia devonorum smoke, about one tenth of a gram. Slowly inhaled the fine, not so harsh smoke, letting it fill my lungs with its aroma. Exhale. Being this was the first time for me, I wanted my experience to be awesome, without regret. I laid the pipe in the ashtray and my mind said no, yet my body said yes. A feeling of euphoria washed over me, a tingling effect in my eyes. I tried to control the emotion, yet it was uncontrollable. I was completely engulfed in an unknowing state, yet it was awesome. My total experience was about 10 minutes, yet I hadn't watched the clock so it could have been longer slash shorter. A plateau effect had arrived and the high leveled into a state of mind rather than an uncontrolled stupor. It was nice and I was part of it now. I walked the house waiting for the next phase. I thought I had felt a little something yet I couldn't describe what it was. Maybe the salvia still working its magic or the ayahuasca or maybe the shrooms. I didn't know. I laid down long enough for my stomach to settle and fall asleep. Dreams. Livid realistic dreams ensue. Dreams of friends asking for help and I am their hero. Dreams so vivid in colors and shapes. I awake. I feel like I am in a tunnel or a series of tunnels connecting to one central place. That place being my body. I cannot move without the following tunnel. Any movement outside the tunnel and my body convulses. I have a feeling in my stomach yet it is almost non-existent. Waves of color, feelings of monumental proportions. This is like no other high I have ever experienced before. I lay back down after a short period of time and close my eyes. Waves and waves of color exploding into every thought. Tranquility, peace, thoughts of anything are not there, I cannot think. I can only let my mind do its own thing. It is its own. It cannot be controlled, yet I don't want to control it. The feelings are too real, the experience whole and wholesome. Still reeling with closed eyes, I never again wish to open. Mumble mumble. I try to speak to my wife who is not tripping, yet she can't hear me or she wishes not to respond. Oh well, I don't need the negativity anyway. I'm just so positive thinking and my mind reels and my heart so light and beating and my limbs limp and my head wandering into a land where everything is so awesome and great and silence thoughts. Everything stopped for some time. I was able to think for myself again, my every thought manufactured by me. I rose from the state I had been in and wondered what had happened. My stomach a little queasy yet not hurting to any extent. I drank some water and felt it go down. I felt the water travel down my throat into my small intestines, following it as it goes. Right into my stomach, the cool liquid stopped. I figured on making myself something to eat, as I had not known how long I had been without sustenance. Cereal and milk. I ate a whole bowl, finished it off with some more water. I returned to my bed and lay down to watch some television. I still had a head trip, yet it was so non-formal. Flip, flip, flip through the channels. From this point on, I cannot tell you exactly what was watched on television, all I know is this. Everything was warped and hilariously entertaining. After a while of this, I closed my eyes and drifted into another visionary trance. Everything seemed to be mocking my every move. I try to enhance the feeling by moving more and it goes away. So I lay still, eyes shut, everything, everything seemingly moved by thought, then as fast as it had come on. I fell asleep. When I woke this morning, a feeling washed over me just for a second. A feeling of sadness that the trip had ended. I ate and drank and felt fine. I had not even experienced the usual next day squirts from previous shroom trips. No headache, no next morning tiredness, still yet I feel head trippy like a small hangover. Yet even it is almost non-existent. All in all, the whole trip was eventful, yet not what expected in the same breath. An afterthought, if asked to do it all over again, I would. Just not today, or tomorrow. Maybe next week. As remembrance to the salvia trip, the salvia took me to a place never before experienced. I lost all control over my functions, and if people think this is fun, then so be it. Not for me. Thanks.
What is going on guys, it is Blur here back with another video on someone's channel. We have another Amanita Muscaria trait report here today. This one has a very, very intriguing title, Never Been More Scared Ever. This one is written by a guy called AJ. The dose is three caps and the body weight is 165 pounds. Uh, my channel should be linked in the description and I'll comment down below. Let's get into the report. I had eaten these things before with no effect, but the Washington variety is nothing to play with. I had about 10 to 15 grams, three small to medium dried caps, and went to bed after thinking that the famed Amanitas had once again eluded me. I couldn't have been more wrong, and it turned into one of the most terrifying nights of my life. I began having lucid dreams, and by the time the trip woke me up, I was too far gone to associate it with the mushrooms. It wasn't until the next morning that I realized I had been tripping balls all night. The lucid dream took me to outer space and I became a particle. At times I thought I was the only thing in existence. At times I thought I was talking to God. And at other times I thought I was God. I felt like a particle flying through space and time. Then I woke up and really started tripping. I couldn't stand up and I didn't know why. I laid back down and flew back to outer space, then I died, left my body, fell through limbo in my particle state, and was reborn after giving into the sensation that I was the only thing in existence, that I was hopelessly alone for all of eternity with no form. There was a light, and when I opened my eyes, I couldn't see the room around me. Then I tripped harder. I forgot which, which me had my eyes open, and which one had eyes closed. And I became an infinite chain of awareness. It got so bad that I literally thought I had gone insane. I thought I had died in my sleep and was now flying to some sort of afterlife. I thought I had died in my sleep. I mean, damn. At times I was in heaven, and at times I was in hell. It was such a hopeless feeling. I literally thought I'd be damned to this isolation for all of eternity. The thought that I might be tripping never entered my mind. I was convinced I had died. The entire time I felt like a particle flying around the void, bumping into other particles. I died and was reborn what seemed like an infinite number of times. Somehow, it all made sense to me and I felt like I really understood God and reality and spontaneous existence. The only thing I can even begin to say is that I got to experience the God particle. I thought I had left my life behind and was never going to wake up. I thought that I was an infant inside of a womb and maybe got to experience the first moments of life all over again. In the early stages of the trip, when I still had motive function, I contemplated killing myself, convinced that I was asleep and trying to wake up. I still don't know which parts were a dream and which really happened. I suddenly found myself teleporting all around my house. I was either sleepwalking or astral projecting. Not sure which, but at one point, I found myself not sure which. I but at one point, I found myself standing naked in my kitchen, having no recollection of how I got there. Considering I had tried and failed to stand up out of bed, I'm leaning more towards the astral projection than sleepwalking. I've done acid and shrooms, and I cannot even begin to compare them to Amanita's. I love tripping, but this experience was something that could have very well ended my existence or left me in a state of psychosis. I've heard that a bad Amanita trip doesn't even begin to compare to a bad acid trip and, good God, were they ever right. It was beyond fear. It was a state of utter hopelessness. I thought I was going to be in limbo forever. And a part of me still thinks I'm in limbo and that this life is simply a trip of its own. I think basically I'm a particle of sub-sumatomic state and that my reality is made up of simply my relationship to other particles. I struggled for a long time with whether there were any particles around me or if I was simply rolling on the curvature of space and time. I wouldn't recommend reading anything about astronomy before tripping. I think hawking is something to, somewhat to blame for much of the bad aspects of the trip, especially since my state was more on the level of appreciation of shiny things, not much for intellectual contemplation. Had I simply put on the nature channel and relaxed, I probably would have been fine. The worst of it was that I forgot I had even eaten the things and was absolutely convinced I had died in my sleep. For all intents and purposes, I think I did die. 
at least on the level that I did leave my body entirely. I was constantly aware of who I was, but could not get back into my body during the worst of it. I was hopelessly trapped in the void, and still feel that a part of me will always and has always been there. I didn't feel at peace or get back into my body until I accepted that I was alone and that my life and external reality was all an illusion. I still feel sad thinking that all the people around me might simply be creations of my lonely ID as it bounces around the cosmos. In any case, I feel that I have a much more expansive view of reality and a better, better grip on it than I did before. I don't think I'm afraid of death anymore, at any rate, or maybe more afraid of it than ever. One curious thing. I've always had an irrational fear of spiders, and the next morning I found one on my floor. I had picked it up before thinking about it, thinking how odd it was that I didn't recoil from it. I think maybe I had experienced all the fear and suffering I could for a while and just didn't have any further capacity for such things. I still don't know what all happened to me. I have missing pieces and I think some of the things I experienced were simply too painful to remember. I remember having thought that I had contacted entities, but I was too afraid to try and remember them and so left them far behind in my trip and memories. The memories are fading very quickly, and now 10 hours post-trip, it's quickly becoming as if it never happened. I woke up this morning and couldn't believe I was alive, then I couldn't believe I had actually tripped and halfway wondered if it was all just a bad dream. I wish it were anyways. Then on the other hand, I very much cherish their experience. I can't say why, but I feel as if I was given a look into something very real, important, and very, very special. Like the serpent said, something only God knows. Whatever I realized, I can't remember. It was something that after it happened was immediately without description. It was a feeling, an emotion, something that cannot be put into words. It changed me, however, in ways I can't even begin to understand. I don't feel like the same person I was, and my life before this doesn't seem real. In some way, I feel that I have complete control over my reality in one way, or another. There we have it, guys. That report was deep. That was short. That was a short report, but that was a deep one, and that was very, very, very interesting. Um, so, yeah, this guy, it, it, he doesn't even know if he's alive anymore. <laughs> he doesn't even know if he's alive anymore, and um, that's that's just crazy to think about in, a, in of itself, right? And um, that seems like a very hellish trip, I will say so myself, um, especially the astral projection teleporting around the house thing. Like, that would freak me the fuck out if that was happening to me. Uh, sorry for swearing. I don't know if someone likes swearing on his channel, but I just did it. But anyway, I hope you guys did enjoy this experience as well. Leave a like if you guys did, and leave a comment below to help out someone's channel. My channel should be in the description below, so come over, subscribe if you want. I make true reports as well. I read out my fans' stories as well and make life story and drug content. Um, so come over. Come over and chill. I'd love it. Thank you to someone again for having me on his channel. Big thank you to him. He's the bro. He's awesome. So make sure you subscribe to him as well. And like I said, leave a comment for him and leave a like because I would appreciate that very, very much. Anyway, guys, hope you all have a very nice day. Peace out.